In this video, we're going to be looking at what's called nucleosynthesis. And that's all about making nuclei. See, nucleo means nuclei, and then synthesis means to make. So here, we're going to be concerned with making nuclei. Now, when I mean we're concerned with, we're going to be talking about the main mechanism that makes most of the elements that we know of, and those are stars. So we're really, this is actually pretty fundamental here, we're actually trying to figure out then, or trying to look at or investigate um, how the elements that make us up and that make up the Earth, for example, uh, how those elements came to be. So what actually made them? So this is really kind of explaining how we came to be, in a sense. So uh, first of all, we have to have a star. I was just talking about how nucleosynthesis is going to be happening in stars. So first step, you have to make a star. Well, I mean, for that, you need a universe. Uh, check, we have that. And on top of that, you need hydrogen. So hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's what you need. So imagine, this is maybe, uh, yeah, maybe we'll write it like this. So imagine um, a big cloud of hydrogen gas. So this is actually what's sitting out in outer space, okay, in sort of what we call interstellar space. Interstellar means the space between stars. So there's a lot of gas out there. So imagine a big cloud of hydrogen gas. And the key thing is this, every atom attracts every other atom. And the reason is, again, this is why we call this astrophysics, because we're using our laws of physics here. Um, every atom attracts every other atom. And why is that? That is because we have gravity. Remember, gravity is an attractive force. Remember uh, the equation here, G capital M, little m over R squared. This is the force due to gravity between two masses, m with maybe a little m and a big M, and this here's the space between them. Of course, G is just a constant, it's just a big number. It's a, well, it's actually a very small number. It's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, I believe. But in any case, every atom in this hydrogen cloud attracts every other atom. And as a result, then, uh, the cloud is very likely going to, so cloud will slowly uh, contract due to gravity. You see that um, these different atoms will actually attract the other atoms. So maybe we should draw this. So let's just say we have some sort of big cloud right here, and it's got lots of different hydrogen atoms. These are all going to be H's. Okay, each of these little dots, those are going to be, you know, little atoms of hydrogen. And so what happens then is, well, the cloud will slowly contract due to gravity. In other words, what's going to happen then is that some of these um, hydrogen atoms, so let's just say we have a hydrogen here, and we have a hydrogen here, and we have one here, and we have one here. What will happen to them is they will come towards each other because they're all attracted to each other. So let's just say so something like this. So this cloud will sort of contract due to gravity. Now, of course, this happens on a very, very large scale, but the neat thing is, of course, is if it contracts, well, that means the pressure will increase, and so will the temperature, because the temperature is all about the average kinetic energy of these uh, hydrogen atoms. So, uh, and if the pressure, uh, pressure and temperature are high enough, this doesn't always happen, but if the pressure and temperature are high enough, um, actually, I should say high enough to overcome other forces because there's all sorts of other forces going on here, but to overcome other forces, things like nuclear forces, a strong nuclear force. So if, if the pressure and temperature are high enough to overcome the other forces, this is the key thing, then fusion can begin, and I'll say nuclear nuclear fusion can begin. So this is basically how a star starts being a star. I mean, at the beginning, it's just a bunch of hydrogen gas. And those hydrogen 
atoms, they all attract each other. So imagine then they come close enough together to where there's enough pressure and the temperature is high enough to where you can overcome all these other forces that are repelling them. So there's, for example, electric forces repelling them and there's nuclear forces repelling them. But if uh, it's high enough to overcome those, then you can actually start having nuclear fusion. Now what does it mean to have nuclear fusion? The key thing here with nuclear fusion is you're fusing you know, hydrogen and you're eventually making helium so that you're making the next element. So you're starting with a sort of light element and you're making a heavier element. This is the main thing that's going on inside a star. So how do you make a star? That's what you need. You need some hydrogen gas that's being squished and then you can start having nuclear fusion. And that's what's really going on here. I remember how the teacher said, is this confusing <laughs> or confusion? But no, this is hopefully fairly straightforward. This is nuclear fusion. Now, let's take a look at some nice pictures. This is a picture of the Eagle Nebula. Uh, actually, before doing this, I just want to go back here just for a second. Actually, no, I can explain it here. When these clouds, these clouds of hydrogen gas, for example, what's going on here that you can see these pretty colors here, this is actually a cloud of hydrogen gas. There's lots and lots of it in outer space. What happens is um, light can hit it or energy can hit these uh, clouds and they can basically give off light so they can sort of radiate. So this gas right here is sort of, it's considered a hot gas. Because of that, then it emits light. So it makes very pretty colors, for example. Now, the key thing is, um, well, there's two main ways to sort of start a star. You could do it this way, you know, sort of spontaneously, just by having lots of hydrogen gas and it goes in. Or you can sort of give it a kickstart. Turns out, what if you have a star? So let's, let's pretend we had like a really bright star somewhere in here. Um, and this bright star was really, really powerful. It was very luminous. And so what it's doing then is the light coming from that star could end up basically cooking away this hydrogen gas. It essentially sort of opens it up here. So it sort of squishes it all, sort of pushes the gas back. So what's going on here in the Eagle Nebula is something similar to that. So we have this gas that's actually being sort of pushed back and sort of squished. So we have these regions, see right here, and these regions here and here that are sort of dark still? Those are regions of over-density. In other words, those are regions of you know higher density of hydrogen gas. So that could be caused spontaneously, or it could be caused by another big star that's making you know new stars form, basically. So this is actually a really nice picture, I think, of the entire Eagle Nebula. See, there's another big thing right here, another pillar right here, and these ones right here. And of course, the big famous picture that Hubble Space Telescope took, if we go back right here, if we zoom in on this little piece right here, so imagine we took uh, a picture, let's say right here. It's roughly like this right here. So if we sort of, we sort of took that right there, sort of, so it's turned a little bit. So this tower, this tower, this tower, and this will be the bottom of our page. That's what you're seeing here in sort of zoomed in version. <laughs> and so what's happening is these clouds of hydrogen gas, they have an extra density you know, because they're being squished. They're being you know, pushed together. And so because of that, then you could actually have nuclear fusion starting. So you can see these really cool little areas here and all over the place. You can actually see places in this particular picture here where you see these, these things right here where they're sort of left over. So some of the other material sort of pushes back, but there's some stuff left over. And those are actually thought to be sort of the beginnings of stars. So see the, the material inside the center, that might actually be the star that'll sort of start fusing. So it'll start fusing hydrogen to helium. And all the extra leftover material, that could actually make the rest of the planets. In other words, that's how you make a solar system. So these are called protoplanetary disks, or proplid for short. So this is a picture of uh, a protoplanetary disk in the Orion Nebula. So that's a different nebula. It's actually found in the constellation Orion. Um, and it turns out, you know, if you know your uh, constellations, uh, Orion sort of goes like, you know, there's like uh, something like this right here. This over here is Orion. And the nebula is actually found sort of right here, right in his uh, sword. Or as other students are like, that's not a sword, that's his something else. So if you sort of zoom in here, you see this beautiful nebula. Actually, it turns out the nebula looks like this. This is a really nice picture of the Orion Nebula. And if you look carefully, you can find some of these 
proplids, these protoplanetary disks. These are early sort of beginning solar systems. So you can see right here, there's a big cloud of dust right here. And this one right here, for example, um, well, it's very dark stuff. And inside is thought to be a brand new star. So you can see in this picture right here, for example, we see that this bright stuff right here, that's very likely the star that's starting to fuse hydrogen to helium. And this extra junk left over right here, um, that's thought to make up the rest of the solar system. So for example, um, it's thought that our own sun started in a very similar situation to this. So for example, our own sun would have started fusing hydrogen to helium and the extra material left over that would have ended up through gravity, for example, clumping together. And of course it would all be in a nice orbit. And those orbits would end up being sort of slowly cleaned out by other clumps running into other clumps, running into other ones and make successfully larger, larger, larger uh, clumps. And of course, those pieces might combine together to make asteroids or comets, or they might even make planets if there's big enough chunks. And of course, those run into each other and all sorts of mayhem happens. But eventually, if you sort of let the clock go far enough, in theory, you get a solar system like ours. So that's sort of the idea behind it. So these are sort of brand new solar systems, brand new stars in the middle with all this stuff left over that very likely makes other planets. And now up until fairly recently, um, well, in the early 90s, for example, uh, they still weren't sure if other stars had planets around them. And the only star we knew for sure that had a planet around it was our own sun. But actually now, since then, I mean, they've been finding lots and lots and lots of them. So it turns out um, almost any star you look at seems to have planets around it. Uh, not quite almost, uh, not quite every one of them, but many, many of them. So that's what's really cool is that this is brand new stuff, you know, since uh, around the mid 90s up until now, they're detecting more and more examples of what we call exoplanets. In other words, planets around other stars. So we're seeing some interesting things, of course, from those and those help us to refine our theories about how our own solar system formed and perhaps how life got here. And of course, that's a very interesting topic on its own. But all this is related to these brand new solar systems. So we can see from this picture right here, the Orion Nebula, and these are some of the zoom-ins of some of these protoplanetary disks that they've seen in this nebula. Again, those are places where we think that there's an over-density of hydrogen, so that means stars are just beginning to form. Here's a nice sort of mosaic of some of the proplids from the Orion Nebula. I think this is really nice to look at. I mean, these are all sort of brand new stars. So you can see some of them here, this would be the star in the middle, and this would be some of the extra material. And maybe this material might end up clumping around it, we're not entirely sure. We just have to wait long enough and we would see it. So that sort of gives an idea of how a solar system can form.